Hi there. Are you looking for the ultimate grounding strategy? In my 30 years of experience, grounding is the most important element of any PCB design and the biggest cause of problems. I'll show you how to prevent all of these problems with just three simple rules. I've made two dedicated test boards to show you any problem you can run into so you don't have to. Let's get started. So this is the circuit I'll be using. It's a ninth order elliptical filter. It's a 50 ohm filter with a bandwidth of roughly 30 megahertz. Now what you see here is an SMA connector on both ends of the filter and you see four parallel resonators in series with the signal. Now these four resonators will go to a very high impedance at their frequency which results in four deep dips in the characteristic of this thing. So here you see the ideal simulation of this filter and here you see the four very deep dips. Now we can never realize this in practice because in practice we cannot have ideal components. You also see five capacitors to ground and they will help with the overall low pass nature of this thing. Let's start with the worst possible layout. You can see it on the left top here. And uh, the first problem is uses very thin traces for the grounding. So that means that um, the ground will not be very good. And furthermore, the ground current going through these capacitors will add up through these traces. So they will have crosstalk with each other. Um, there's a plane on the bottom but it's not used. So the plane is basically not doing anything. Another snack here on this design is you can see it very well on the actual picture here. These inductors will create field lines that go in this direction. They go around like this and this inductor will create it in the same way. So these inductors are basically coupled and uh, that's also a problem in this design. Now, when we look at the characteristic, we see the red line. The red line is basically what this layout is doing. The purple line was our ideal simulation and the blue line is actually what I can achieve using the, those three rules. And um, so you can see there's a huge difference between the worst possible layout and the best possible layout. The next thing we need to look at is PCB layer stackups and vias. Um, now a PCB layer stackup is basically a cross section of a board. On the bottom here we see a standard cross section for a two layer board with a thickness of 1.6 millimeters. We see a layer of copper a layer of insulator, usually FR4 material, and the bottom layer of copper. Now on a four layer, we see four layers of copper with different insulator thicknesses in between. So you see that the first insulator between layer one and two has a thickness of roughly 0.4 millimeters, and we see a core between layer two and three of 0.8 millimeters. What we also see is a via. Now a via connects all layers of the board together in one spot. You can get more advanced board technologies which connect, for instance, layer one and two or one, two and three, but they're far more expensive. So I generally try to avoid those. Now, the VIA impedance heavily depends on the board stack up. Here we see the VIA inductance versus the VIA length. Now on a two layer board, we see that the VIA length is roughly 1.5 to 1.6 millimeters, which ends up being 500 picoharries. Now on a four layer board, we can uh, put the ground layer on the second layer and our VIA length would be just 0.38 millimeter in this case. So that would be 47 nanoharries. Now the boards I'm using have a, a pre prac thickness of 0.19 millimeters. So that gets down to I think it was 12 pico Henry. So you see an incredible difference in via inductance between a four layer board and a two layer board. It's 12 versus 500. And that's going to make a huge difference in the next measurements. Now let's do a measurement on via impedance. Um, I prepared two test circuits for it. Now here you see the schematic. It's basically two SMA connectors with a wire in between and that wire is grounded in the middle. Now here you can see what it looks like. You see the ground via here for a two layer version and here for the four layer version. Now on the top layer, of course, you cannot tell the difference between the two and the four layer. However, let's see what this does in practice. So these are the measurement results. So since this via is not ideal and it has an inductance, the suppression will not be infinite. If, if, if this were an ideal via, then um, you would basically have minus infinity gain over the whole frequency range from zero gigahertz to one gigahertz. However, you can see the blue line, which is a two layer, which has quite a lot of impedance, which means uh, there's pretty much crosstalk. Um, the loss at 800 megahertz is something like 22 decibels. 
So that means at 800 megahertz, this VR only suppresses 22 decibels. The four layer, however, suppresses far more. It's around, let me see, 58. Now I check the difference, that's around 34 decibels, which is a ratio of 50. Now, what we saw on the graph was 12 nanohari versus 500 nanohari, which is a ratio of 42. That's pretty close. So this VR modeling is pretty accurate. So this is the next improved layout we're going to look at. Um, it's still a T2 layer, but now we're using a ground plane and each ground has its own VIA. As you can see here, each ground connection has its own VIA. We still have coupling between the inductors, as you can see here. And something else that I noticed is there seems to be coupling between current loops. Now I have to explain that a little bit further. As we've seen in video one, the ground return current follows exactly the path of the signal forward current. So when the signal current goes here and towards the VIA, the return current will follow an opposite path under the signal current. What this means is we have a small loop here. If you were to look into the board from this side, you would see a current loop here. Now there also is a similar current loop here. And what I notice is that this, these seem to act like a transformer. So it's two coupled inductors. And the, re the way I found it out is I moved this capacitor over here and I made a via here by drilling an extra hole. And it suddenly started matching the ideal simulations a lot better. And I cannot explain this with capacitive coupling just on the top. So I think uh, it's inductive coupling. And in the next video, I will have some measurements to support that. Let's see what the measurement results of this new layout look like. So the orange line is the response of this layout and the red line is the worst layout that we, we've seen before. So we see quite a big improvement, but we still have quite a long way to go to the, the best possible layout we can make, which is the blue one. Let's have a look at the next layout upgrade. We still have a two layer layout. We still use a ground plane and still each ground connection has its own via. However, we've solved the inductor coupling. As you can see here, the inductors are rotated 90 degrees with respect to each other or really far apart. So their fields cannot interact anymore. We've also solved that current loop, even though we're not entirely sure what's going on there. Um, the loop here and the loop here are 90 degrees respect to each other. So they hardly see each other anymore. They're much further apart. So this is really solving all those things. Now let's have a look what that does. We are getting the black characteristic and the biggest change is above 400 megahertz. We see it's much, much better there. We see it's, it's better everywhere, but especially at the higher frequencies, it works much better. So before we go to the next measurement, I have something that may be of interest to you. Um, I started with electronics when I was eight years old. I'm almost 50, so I've been doing this for 42 years almost, and I've been designing boards for 30 years. I've gathered all the mistakes I've seen during that time, and I've put them in a document. It's called the Electronic Product Development Checklist. Um, I use it for all my designs. So I go by these lists whenever I finish a design, and it, I always see that I forgot something, some little detail. Sometimes it's, some, it's something major. It really helps me to get my designs first time right. If you want to have this document, leave a, a comment saying, send me the checklist. Let's go on. Let's go to the final layout, the layout where we use all the three important rules. So what's different? If you look at this picture, it looks exactly the same. The only difference is this is a four layer and the ground plane is not 1.6 millimeters away, but just 0.19 millimeters away. So that yields a huge improvement in the impedance for the vias. Let's see what this does. As you can see, we get the blue line now. And um, that runs along the ideal simulation for, for a pretty long time. Now over here, uh, there's a bit of a difference. That's just because the, the Q of the real life components, components is not as good as the Q of ideal components in the simulator. And you can see that it cannot follow. You can also see it here. The purple line is really flat and then drops down. And here it drops down a little bit earlier. That's also due to reduced Q. But you can see that in general, the attenuation is very close to the simulation. Only at 800 megahertz, it starts to deviate because components are not really ideal. So this is actually a really good layout. Based on everything we've seen now, we can now show the ultimate grounding layout rules. So rule number one, use a ground plane without obstructions. 
Rule number two, give each ground connection its own via as close as possible to the pad of the component that needs to be grounded. And three, use a four layer board stack up. Now four layer boards are a little bit more expensive than two layer boards. So what if you want to get the most out of your two layer board? That's something I want to look at in the next video. I don't know the results yet, but I'm going to see what I can get out of it. So the next video will be about optimizing two layer grounding. Uh, first, we'll take a deeper look at the two layer layouts that we have and see if we can improve them. We'll have a look at the added risks with two layer layouts. We'll have a look how we can get the most out of two layer designs. And I'll show you rules to optimize two layer boards. If you have any questions regarding something I've explained during this video, please let me know in the comments. I may address it in another video. Please like and subscribe if you like this content and um, see you next time.